Guess when I was last here. Go on, you go on. 2017. I can't hear it because I've got bananas in my ears, classic bananas. So I'll tell you when I was last here. I don't know about this room, but I was last in Vancouver nearly five years ago in October 2017. And I tell you how I know that is because we've been here for a few days and I've been driving around. And um, I remember one evening, and it was the evening of the 26th of October in um, 2017. And I remember it for a number of reasons. One was I had pneumonia. I had no idea I had pneumonia, but I was coughing my lungs up and I didn't feel well. And uh, I, I don't know what, yes, I do know why I'm telling you. And I'll tell you in a minute why I'm telling you this. But also, it was an evening when I did a solidarity meeting with the people of Palestine. You know, it was in a church somewhere. And uh, there were two lovely ladies moderating a QA with me, a talk and a QA. One of them, I, I, I don't remember either of their names, I'm afraid, ashamed to say. One was from Independent Jewish Voices lovely Jewish lady, and the other was from some Muslim organisation, a lovely Muslim woman. And we had a bloody good chat, and there were a couple of thousand people there, and we communicated one with another, as you can imagine, and it was a really, really nice evening. And it reminded me of this, that this song that we're about to do now is a song I wrote during Covid, and it's called The Bar. And it's a very long song. It's about 15 minutes long. We're only going to do one. We're only going to do a couple of verses. I'm not turning my back on it. Sorry, just stop my um, The bar, yeah. But the bar is something that um, developed in my mind. It's an imaginary place that I carry around with me, in my head and in my heart. And it's like, it's called the bar because it's somewhere where you can get a drink and unwind. It's somewhere where you can meet friends. It's also somewhere where you can meet strangers and where you can exchange ideas and opinions without fear or favour. Uh, it's a place of safety in my imagination. So, and, and the bit of the song we're going to do now um, it's about that. But what it made me think of it was that church on 26th of October in Vancouver five years ago was like the bar. It was that kind of place. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one more little story about it before we sing the bar. At the end of this conversation, one of the women, I think it was the Jewish lady, said to me, um, what gives you hope? How do you keep hope in your heart? And that's, you know, that's a, it's kind of a question. I didn't think about the answer because Sorry, guys. Yeah, no doubt. somebody popped into my head. It's a friend of mine who's a French friend. He's dead now. He's actually, he was Catalan. His father was Catalan, then he moved to France when he was a baby. His name was Etienne Rougier, and he was a writer, and he was a lovely, lovely man. Um, he was also an alcoholic and he smoked about 500 dozen inches cigarettes every day. So he's dead now, as he would be. But before he died, quite close to the end, he and I were working on an opera about the French Revolution. And one morning we had to go to CBS Studios on, on the west side of uh, New York City. So we walked the length of 54th Street and there was a table in the sunshine on the sidewalk. And he said, I uh, was to be on an envoy a little uh, petit déjeuner. So I said, yeah, okay. Because I knew he, would, he needed large whiskey. So we sat down at the same right and espresso. He had a large whiskey. And after about three bets and hedges, my friend was sitting there. And uh, I, I said something to him. I have no idea what I said, but it was some kind of a philosophical question, a bit like the Jewish lady just asked me. And this is what he said to me. And I wrote it down and I carried it in my back pocket. I haven't got it, but I did. And this is what Etienne said to me. He said, <laughs> like they do, you know, I don't know if you know any French people, but, but they're a bit like that. They, they like a chat, but they like it to be slow and deep, you know, so. <laughs> and he did not shrug him, because he was Catalan as well. Anyway, eventually he said, <sighs> Oh, 
was here. For those of you who don't speak Catholic, that's I was here. I was here. <laughs> and then he says, I felt something. Okay. And perhaps I was not alone. It's not going to make the end of the show and come any quicker. Just the show is what the show is. So, but that's what I was hearing. Mate. And if, if, one, if one of those ladies is here tonight, hey babe, I wish I could remember your name, but anyway, it was a great night. Okay, back to the bar. Right. So I hope you've gathered by now that this piano is the bar, but as far as this evening is concerned, it extends to the chiefest nosebleeds up there. We are all in the bar together. We can exchange our love for that. Right, this bit of the song has two ladies in it. Apart from that, it's not these two ladies, it's two. One of them is a homeless black lady, an old lady. She has slid off this pre precarious moving platform that we call modern life, and she's living on the street in a cardboard box. She is not in great shape. The other woman is younger, and she is a Lakota, Lakota Sioux, Native American woman from Stand Rock in North Dakota. And she finds the older black lady on the street and she helps her, of course, because that is in her nature. And she brings her here to the bar. So that's the story. All right, I'll play.
mind me. Get the fuck off.